Go for it. When I was a kid, I watched a lot of nature shows, and I mean a lot of nature shows. Frogs, snakes, lizards, bugs. You could say I was a creature kid, but really I was just fascinated to watch the little critters skitter around, going about their lives, following whatever whims cause a lizard to do what lizards do. And all of it was filmed by what seemed to me like an omniscient camera that could go anywhere and see anything. I wanted to be able to control the camera myself, point it to where I wanted to, and follow the critters I wanted to see. The closest I could get to that experience were triopes, little prehistoric creatures frozen in time. A lot like sea monkeys, but also not shrimp, but also kind of shrimp? They're a sort of shrimp. Anyway, you put them in water, and they hatch, and they grow, and they come to life before your very eyes. And that was pretty cool for a while, until one of them got too big and started to eat the rest of the triopes in the tank. But you know what never eats its entire family? Robots! In 2011, a toy came out that changed my... I was gonna say life, but mostly it just changed the way I spent my allowances. Good God. Hi, I'm Jet Cuso, and today I'm talking about one of the best toy lines ever made, Hexbug Nano. I was not a filmmaker back when I was a kid, but I am a filmmaker now, so a lot of people ask me for advice in regards to YouTube. How did you get so good at lighting? How did you get so good at editing? How can you be so confident talking on camera? And how are you so humble? Well, I'm still working on the last one, but I'll tell you my very simple philosophy for YouTube content creation. Every video I've made since we started making videos has been to improve myself and my own skill set. So even when a video doesn't perform well, I still have the gratification of having improved my craft. I've been on YouTube for 10 years now, and it's taken me this long to get where I am. But you can get there a whole lot faster with the help of this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that helps you learn new skills and improve skills you already have. Whether it's video editing, YouTube and cinematic lighting, or even technical stuff like how to be confident and engaging on camera, Skillshare has thousands of classes to speed up your creative journey. Currently, I'm taking Jordi Vandeput's class, Learn Adobe After Effects CC for Beginners. After Effects has always been an incomprehensibly complicated mess to me, but Jordi's class is breaking it down into ridiculously simple concepts. Each lesson is less than 20 minutes long, so it's easy for me to watch during breakfast. I'd love for some of you guys to come with me on this journey, so the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description will receive one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Skillshare doesn't have any ads either, because the whole platform is built for learning and creativity. But only the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description get the free trial. So hop to it and join Skillshare now. Okay, on to the Hexbug stuff. This is a Hexbug Nano. It's what's known as a bristle bot to smart nerds. A vibrating hard body robot equipped with angled brushes underneath it. The vibrations make the body bounce up and down, and the bristle angle pushes it forward each time it falls. They can be made very simply with a toothbrush and a motor, but the company Innovation First decided to streamline the concept with an attractive design and fun colors. <laughs> the result of any bristle bot is an erratic pattern of movement, as imperfections in the bristles and the surface send it buzzing off in random directions. And goodness gracious, it looks like a bug. Like, it really looks like a little bug skittering around. 
They'll even flip themselves upright if they fall over, after a decent amount of gr grotesque jiggling. A hex bug will quickly end up zipping off the edge of any table it's on, so your best bet is to put it on the floor and start chasing it around like you're in a Tom and Jerry cartoon. My childhood attention span was occupied remarkably well just trying to keep my first hex bug from skittering too far away from me, and into the all-consuming void beneath the oven. It's pretty fun for a while, but then the thought hits you. What if... two of them? Immediately upon placing two live Hexbug Nanos on the kitchen floor, Chaos Theory takes full effect. It takes catching a fly with chopsticks level focus to keep two Nanos in check. Three makes the task impossible, so you get creative. You begin to utilize pretty much the only hard building material available to most children. Books! If blankets and pillows are the walls of childhood castles, hardback books are the dungeons and catacombs of small-scale playing pretend. Kitchen floor hexbug mazes will only get you as far as your parents' patience will allow, and carpeted bedroom floors do not work for these guys. But lucky for you, consumerism has a solution for everything! Playsets! Good lord, the playsets! The first one I got was really simple, a white hexagonal platform called a cell to which you can connect gray track pieces to make a simple loop. Yeah, this, it, this isn't enough. The Habitat Set. Three hexagons, with many more tracks. You can mash it together with your starter set to make a properly big complex of bugs, skittering around on their paths. They bump into each other, fighting to get past each other on the tracks, searching around with little invisible feelers to find their next imaginary task. This is the point where you're either going to recognize the magic of this toy line, or wonder what the point even is. Cause you don't play with the hex bugs. Not in the same way you play with an action figure, where the toy is an extension of yourself. Hex bugs are quite the opposite. They're automatons. You don't control them at all. They are their own creatures, and you are the arbiter of their world. You design their habitat, let them go free, and simply observe. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, this is not enough bugs for all this space. Man, if only there was a way to... Fine. There we go, that's plenty of bugs. Actually, it might be a few too many bugs. Oh no. Oh no, they're cramped in there. Oh gosh. Oh, they're getting the traffic jams. Oh, I have to help them. Urban development can't be that complicated, right? Ooh, this booster set gives me a bunch more curves. Oh, and this booster set gives me a bunch more straight pieces. Ooh, and the hive play set comes with a rare hex bug, and it opens up into- Warning! Once you acquire the hive play set, there is no return. I'm not kidding, this thing was a game changer. It was a really good product, and it opened up new levels for me as a young Hexbug collector. The Hive is a take it with you playset that unfolds into a two story habitat. There's a ramp leading up to the second floor, fun obstacles that plug into holes in the floor, and plenty of space for the bugs. Just like your house! It connects to all of your existing tracks to make an even bigger habitat, but, uh... Hey, what's up with that, uh, second level anyway? They can get up there, but then what? Well, you could follow ADA regulations and make a long OSHA-compliant ramp. Or you can follow suit with the rest of America by simply saying no to workplace safety by purchasing the Hexbug Nano Elevation Set! It features height-adjustable support pillars that connect to all of your existing tracks, and a spiral ramp letting bugs up and down. And you know what? Screw it! Let's get a second hive place it while we're at it! And a spiral ramp booster pack! Yes! Three levels! But why stop there? The battle bridge! Yes! Fight! Fight for my amusement! One shall stand and one shall fall! And a zipline! Only the chosen few get a zipline hook, while the rest shall fall to their doom! <laughs> um... So around that point I got a little bit older, and while I wouldn't say I grew out of hexbugs, I grew into other... darker... 
interests. But Hexbug Nano kept going. In year three, they introduced Hexbugs V2 with bristles on their back so they could travel through these little tube pipes. These things honestly look insane and incredible, but I never got my hands on any because I got scared that my normal Hexbugs would get stuck in the pipes and I'd have to get all new ones. And let that be a lesson to toy designers. Always allow backwards compatibility and advertise backward compatibility. You might get some new sales by reselling slightly different versions of stuff kids already have, but more likely you'll scare kids and parents off with your so-called innovation. Or your Apple, in which case you can do whatever nutty BS you want because your products look cool and your company's name is cute sounding instead of sounding like a new underwear brand advertising itself on a podcast. Some of this stuff looks absolutely nuts though, and I would love to get my hand on at least a few of these sets. Finally, my Hexbug habitat can be as complex as the human genome. One day it's the bugs, and the next day you're considering how to recreate the Stanford prison experiment in your Discord server, until you realize that every Discord server is the Stanford prison experiment. Ahem, clears my throat to give the impression that the jokes are improvised and I'm regaining my composure. Ahem. <clears throat> there are a lot of little details that make this toy line as brilliant as it is. Small design choices with big impacts. The platforms have these little gates that you can swing close when there isn't a track attached. The length of the tracks and the angle of the curves are perfectly measured, so they pretty much always bring you back to another platform no matter how wild and far out you get. Hexagons are the bestagons, so utilizing hexagons makes for an effortlessly customizable building system. They even have the slots for the multi-story pillar connector things molded in to the early products before they ever revealed the elevation set in year two. They designed the year one products with year two in mind, so when the multi-story sets were revealed, it was like all of the stuff we already had had twice the value. I had to get my hands on the multi-story stuff to use the features I didn't previously know that my toys had. It's not just backwards compatibility, it's planned forward compatibility. And I don't know if there's a real term for that. There probably is, but I didn't Google it. I just wrote the script. Anyway, for a comparison, Baku Gear from the Bakugan reboot are designed to fit onto the magnets of Ultra Bakugan. So when year two hit and Baku Gear were released, it was exciting because they opened up a whole new feature on all of the year one Ultra Bakugan we already had and compare this with Battle Gear from Gundalian Invaders, which were useless and incompatible with anything but the newest Bakugan. Sure, it made me want to buy new Bakugan to use the Battle Gear with, but if they were backwards compatible, I would have bought way more Battle Gear. This kind of foresight goes a really long way in keeping a toy line evergreen. Imagine if the Hexbug Nanos had had the year three bristles on their backs in year one. We wouldn't have known what they were for until the crazy spirally tubes came out, and it would have blown my mind and I would have bought a million of the new sets. To change the subject a little bit, admittedly, the soundscapes that these huge habitats create is, uh, what the other ones? bad. I don't know. I think it's only two. Do I have four? Yeah. So what's the point of the whole thing? Well, the appeal of the whole line is that they are robot bugs that act autonomously. You get to watch them and observe them as they go around, so most of the time you want them to work flawlessly. But they're just chaotic and just flawed enough that you have to manually intercede occasionally. The tracks are wide enough that hex bugs can often wiggle past each other, but sometimes they get stuck and you have to help them out. Sometimes if they fall over they can get up, but sometimes you have to help them back upright. And let it walk up, let it go. Oh, okay. <laughs> they move in a way that looks so alive. When they bump into walls, it looks like they're looking for food. When they're low on battery and they can't get up when they fall over, they squirm around helplessly like a bug stuck on its back. Everything about them inspires empathy from the kid playing with them, which prompts just enough interaction to keep you engaged for hours. Is it fun to make a high platform with one open gate overhanging the carpet? Maybe. 
Does it fill you with a sick fascination to place a one-way gate on a remote platform far to one end of the habitat and see how long it takes for a rat utopia-esque behavioral sink to form naturally? Well, of course it does, but that would make you either a maniac or a future social behavior researcher, and no one would ever want that for you. They're also, like, the perfect combination of cute and cool-looking. Sleek designs, but they're super tiny, and their little legs are really adorable. And all of this doesn't even talk about the little things they did in the marketing. Like putting out rare hex bugs and chase figures, checklists to make you collect more, a perfect $5 allowance price point, test tube shaped packaging to add a pseudo scientific theming to it. It makes you want to buy more bugs, and once you have the bugs, you need the playsets, and the more playsets you have, the more bugs you need to fill it. They even sold their own batteries! It was brilliant! The toy line has continued on ever since then into, admittedly, a lot of weird places. Glow-in-the-dark sets, uh, battle bugs with weapons, space command, uh, transformers? Wow, I completely missed that era. And then there's the current toy line, which has gone in a very colorful direction with an emphasis on these flexible barriers that you can use to make larger habitats without the need for platforms. But you have to have hard floor or a table for that, and that kind of limits the audience, but whatever. I'd actually love to make a comparison video between the new stuff and the old stuff, but I have no idea if any of you are going to care about that, so if you guys can get this video to 3,000 likes and 1,000 comments, I'll make a video comparing old Hexbug Nano with new Hexbug Nano. Anyway, uh, basically, I think my point is that Hexbugs are cool because they're like pets that can't die because they're robots. So if you were a kid that liked nature shows, but almost cried whenever the critters would get eaten by something, uh, you probably had hex bugs. Uh, I don't know, man. The video is either about that or the danger of letting your kids buy into toy lines that can indefinitely scale to match their deepest consumerist impulses. Either way, Hexbug Nano is absolutely one of the best toys ever. Thank you so much for watching. This is Jet Kuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoop! Thank you so much to my patrons, Varun OC, Shivitis, Sierra 107, Skinny Chalk, The Jumping Devil, Mugwump Shadow, and Gavin Greenley. And thank you to my diamond patrons, Chell and Jedi Master. If you want to support me on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash jetcuso. It helps me make way more overly high effort content just like this. Thanks so much.